<laughs> the time has come. I'm excited. I'm happy. But I'm not doing this necessarily to find out. Because a lot of people, I think, it becomes this disillusionment where black people, Africanoid people, have been brainwashed and conditioned to believe that they need a test, a test to determine their roots, right, and where they're from. And for me, I'm not doing it for that reason. I'm actually doing it because I had some extra money. Nowadays, I'm feeling blessed thanks to the ancestors, thanks to the gods and the goddesses that I do have extra money these days. And so I got an email from Ancestry.com. I think it was around Mother's Day with these discounts and offers for doing this uh, DNA test. And I'm like, all right, why not? Why not, right? Um, if anything, and I made this video before, like I talked about this before, my feelings relating to doing this DNA testing, right? Taking the African Ancestry.com test. Um, and uh, supposedly that test is you know, will link you to your tribe, right? It pinpoints all the way down to your tribe. So not just your country of origin, right? Or what region of Africa that your ancestors originated from, but it's supposed to link you to the actual tribe, right? More, a little bit more specific. And so, you know, some people may get excited about it. People who are in tune and, feel very empathic about getting in touch with their African roots and their heritage, which of course I am. I just don't feel like I need a test to determine that, right? I, I've i been out and about, of course, on the streets and people have approached me and said, you look Fulani. Are you Fulani? <laughs> and... I think the whole point of a test is that it's supposed to be accurate, right? Scientifically proven to be accurate. There's, you know, it's evidence-based. There's a lot of research surrounding this, though, a lot of trial and error. So this is supposed to be something that is empirically sound, right? And has actual tests to support people's assumptions about, you know, where they're from. And it kind of removes the, the doubt, supposedly, right, and the curiosity. And um, that way people can speak, I guess, more confidently and affirmatively about who they are and their ancestry, right? So, yeah, of course, people ask me, you know, are you Fulani? And I, for me, I feel like I find more solace and comfort in the unknown, so to speak, right? Like that's not backed by some man-made test. I feel like I'm so guided by the spirits. I'm so guided just by my own intuition, by my ancestors that it's, it's, ha it's for a reason. Like it's for a reason that I haven't taken this test, right? And... I just like conversations that where people just look at me and some may say that I'm ethnically ambiguous where who knows, right? Who knows just by looking at me what I am. I mean, of course, in a broader sense, right? I'm Africanoid. You can just tell by my texture of my hair, right? Looking at my hair. But looking at other features like my face, my eyes, I think that throws a lot of people off. So some people, a lot of people, not even some, a lot of people, even my patients have asked me, are you Asian? Do you have Asian in your background? I heard this growing up in school. People calling me Chinese, Blackanese, <laughs> right? And I know I inherited my eye shape uh, from my mother my maternal side um and my high cheekbones and many african americans black americans we have 
uh, ancestry linked to the Native Americans, which a lot of people who are Pan African, right? There, there's this wave I would say of Pan Africanists where they say, "Oh, well, you know, to be a Pan African, it's like you have to disown your affiliation with anything Native American, right? And, and you have to, you know, basically attribute all of your DNA and all of your ancestry to the motherland. And if you don't, then oh, you're being a coon or you have self hatred, and it's just like, but we are such a dynamic and diverse group of people. Um, and given our history, our atrocious history with being colonized, with being stripped from our native land, uh, with all of the race mixing that has happened, you know, with the, the rapes that have happened in our ancestry, um, which I'm going to talk about in this video link on my dad's side, my paternal side, where, you know, we're mixed with a lot. And so, of course... Of course, you know, we have ties to America, you know, with our Native uh, American ancestry, our Black American, right, foundational Black American ancestry. Of course, we have ties to the, the motherland, the continent of Africa. And even some of us have ties to other places, like outside of those, you know, continents. So I think, you know, conversations surrounding, oh, where are you from? I'm like, why can't I just be? Why do I have to say where I'm from? And even pinpointing, I think, the particular country in Africa, geographical region, like it kind of irks me because I still feel like, you know, with a heightened, with a heightened sense of awareness, right, and understanding and wisdom, you know that the continent of Africa has been colonized. Right. And with that colonization, you know, through the Berlin Conference, the land, the cultures, the languages, like everything has been dissected and pulled apart. And we have been stripped. So to even pay homage to or patronize any particular country, it's just like, is that our true origin is our true native roots right to proclaim why well, i'm nigerian or i'm this i'm that i think you know on a deeper level though one may say okay well it can explain a lot you know culturally speaking or spiritually speaking because you know given we are such a dynamic people we show up different right in the way we look in our mannerisms in our belief systems and our practices in our traditions so you know, of course, not all black people are the same, even if we have been socialized, you know, on this land here in America under one type of society and socialization, we're still so different as black people. And those differences may be attributed to uh, the differences in the types of tribes and um, regions that we have descended from in Africa. So I can understand and respect that much, but I still often feel kind of irked and offended and just annoyed by conversations linked to that because it's just like, even if I knew, so to speak, with concrete evidence, right, through a DNA test, what tribe, or what region of Africa I'm from, I don't even think I would still want to entertain conversations like that. I don't. So I'm going to start with this test, given that it was, you know, relatively inexpensive. I forget how much I paid for it, maybe like $50 or something like that. It's a discount. I think normally they go for like $99 through Ancestry.com. However, through African Ancestry, which is supposed to be a highly sophisticated test that links you to your actual tribe, your people, right, that you descended from. That test, I believe, is like $400. So, let's do this here. I like the mystery. And 
I've seen videos of people who have shared their results, whether through Ancestry.com or through AfricanAncestry.com. And I would say almost <laughs> over 95, if not a higher percentage of the time, on that chart, there is some European representation there, you know? And granted, we know that, but it's just like, do we want to own it? <laughs> do we want to claim that? This is my very first. I remember, like, when I was living back in Los Angeles as I was working on my studies, I, you know, of course, I'd come across these tests. And I was exploring the idea of taking it. Country of origin, Malaysia. Hmm, made in Malaysia? Interesting. It's easy to get started. Activate your kit. Collect your saliva. Mail your sample. Explore your results. Okay, so I think I may have to go online first to activate this DNA kit. Do I necessarily have to do that first? I can do that after, right? Hmm. Seems like it's a lot here happening here. All right, this is what it looks like. You see the light there. Um, it looks pretty simple. It's just like two parts to this. And I would imagine this is the container that it goes in, the collection bag. It comes with uh, this box here where I guess I would put it back in here to return it. And this is Mount Juliet, Tennessee is going to, looks like. All right, so let's see here. We take your privacy seriously. You always control your DNA, sure. And then it has the activation code, same as on the tube. All right. Do not skip this step. Activating your kit with your unique code is the only way to get your DNA results. But I believe I can, sure, I can do the test first, right, and then activate later. Do not eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum for 30 minutes before giving your saliva sample. I haven't eaten anything. I have, I drank some water. I don't smoke. Um, fill the tube with saliva. So you just spit in it to the black wavy line. Damn, that's a lot of fucking, I don't think I have that much saliva. <laughs> Not including bubbles is at or just above the wavy lines. Easy. That's less than one fourth teaspoon. Do not overfill. Replace the funnel with the cap. Another test at once. Report which is your name and activation code from the collection too. All right. I guess I'll go ahead and follow the directions. They say don't skip this step. Let me get my laptop here. I'm actually more interested. I mean, granted, you know, they say DNA tests, they're accurate. And then you have people that swear against these DNA tests. I'm kind of one of those people. Uh, you have to convince me. I'm not a simple believer. 
I think I should have enough battery to do this. So, I'm like, because actually I was on Ancestry. I've been on Ancestry.com building my family tree. So, I would prefer to go that route as opposed to taking a test. Because just, I feel like you just can't really trust these man-made tests. But going through your genealogy, right, your, your genealogical um family tree, you're able to not only see who are your ancestors, right? And through that, you know, we pass down stories and information about who these people were, right? And you will know where they're from. I mean, we're not that far removed from slavery. <laughs> when you think about it. So... And not only that, you get to look at patterns. Like, I'm building my family tree on Ancestry.com. And I love the technology they have built into the actual system where they already have records of pretty much everybody, right? Through the U.S. Census and other um, official uh, collections and, and documents. So with that, they're able to tell you, like, let's say you know the name you should know right the name of your your mother but let's say you perhaps don't know when she was born like they have that information right and even you know your grandparents and their parents right and the children that they had right was was documented on record right through birth and death certificates marriage certificates like they have these official documents. So it makes it that much easier because they fill in the gaps as you plug in the information that you know, Ancestry.com plugs in the information that they already have in their database, right, in our file. And it just makes it that much easier to connect the dots and learn more about your history. Okay, so I'm already logged in still. I guess I'll log you out. I am registering for myself. Get started. Enter the code. Dun, 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 dun. This alphanumeric code here. It says the code is valid. Of course it is. Which country are you registering this kit in? The United States, of course. There's my name. I'm going to type in my birthday. And then it also links you to other family trees with people who are part of your family tree, right? So there are other people, obviously, who are working on their family tree who are part of your family and the system picks that up they detect that they're like oh well you guys share you know common um family members and so they will ask you oh would you like to add this person because the other person that's in your family who's also building a family tree they have these people on their tree but you're missing these people right and so they'll check to see would you like to add them do you know these people and more often than not yeah you you know those people right so then you add them to your tree. Sex assigned at birth, female. Is this the first time you've submitted a saliva sample to Ancestry DNA? Yes, it is my first time. Do you have an identical twin? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> have you had a bone marrow or stem cell transplant from another person? Interesting. No, how will that impact the results though? Um, well, that, of course, it makes sense, right? If you're uh, transferring DNA, the DNA that you have, especially through stem cell transfer, 
would then merge with your DNA and that can throw things off. But I'm thinking, like, aside from that, there's so many other ways that our DNA has been spliced, so to speak. Not to mention these immunizations. Who the hell knows what's exactly, what's really in those immunization shots that we've taken since fucking childhood that was required for enrollment in school and grade school and college and even at jobs, right? I had to take freaking immunization to just work for the state. Um, and then not to mention, we ain't gonna mention the big C, <laughs> which they hate, you, they hate us talking about that here in, in our vlogs, but yeah, we ain't gonna talk about the big C and then with D, immunization that we all had to do. Who the hell knows what the fuck is in that? But anyway. Is anyone else in your household submitting their DNA sample now too? Nope, it's only me, baby. Connect with relatives. You're likely related through DNA to other people who have taken ancestry DNA tests. We call these relatives DNA matches. Participating in matches means seeing a list of relatives and allowing them to see you. With the matches, you may find relatives, learn how you're related. Of course, why not? Why not participate in matches? How should we display you to your DNA matches? Visual representation of relationship labels, like female labels, like daughter, male labels, like son, gender neutral, female. I'm divine feminine, baby. No shame in my game. DNA processing consent. Do you agree to the following? Ancestry may collect processing use my DNA data and other sensitive personal information like my ethnicity and national origin to provide and develop the services by hmm here is a fine print identifying potential relatives by comparing my DNA data to the DNA data of other ancestry DNA customers this is how they're able to determine what where you come from right your DNA match essentially based on those uh, shared characteristics within your DNA. <sighs> and they've collected over a million of samples, so, but, and that's how they're able to classify, right? You as, oh, you're from this region, because how many other millions or thousands of people that share similar DNA have also, um, have the same characteristics as your DNA that are associated with this particular region. That's how they do it. Provide me with reports and personal insights about my ancestral origins, communities, traits, and ancestors, helping me discover details about my family history, including ancestors I share with other ancestry DNA customers, creating related product features and services. Ancestry may also invite me to participate in questionnaires through which ancestry may gather more sensitive personal information including race for additional insights we, pr we process for example by analyzing and de-identifying the sensitive personal information ah well then when they saying this it makes me think like it could be false positives right like if people who are providing their dna samples such as myself right and you're asking me to tell you what my race is of course you're gonna tell me back oh you have roots in africa <laughs> How many people actually say, okay, they identify themselves as Native American? I feel like this is the redundant aspect of doing these tests. We process, for example, by analyzing and de-identifying the sensitive personal information collected from questionnaires and may use it to create related product features and services. I understand that these questionnaires are optional and that I can withdraw my consent. I consent. Uh, DNA sample storing is voluntary. You can register your DNA kit and receive your results even if you do not give consent. Storing your sample with Ancestry can save you weeks of processing time and help you avoid having to submit a new sample and pay associated costs for new products or services in the future, which may result from advances in science and technology. So perhaps one day, Ancestry, I don't think at this present time, they're able to link African people to the actual tribe, but maybe in the future, as 
does uh, African ancestry, they may be able to do that. So if you give consent, we'll store your sample indefinitely unless you tell us to destroy it. Or maybe even other like genetic markers too, they're able to uh, assess with your sample, your one-time sample that you submit. So I guess I will give consent to that. Participate in research. Oh my gosh, all these freaking consents. All right, hopefully it doesn't die on me. I have 12% remaining. Participate in research. Participation is voluntary. You can register your DNA kit and receive your results even if you do not give consent. So they're saying you don't, it's not required. These extra additional things you're asking you can still do the tests, but they invite you to participate in research conducted by us and our collaborators uh, collaborators to advance the, st the study of genetics, genealogy, anthropology, and health. No additional work is required to participate. Data we share outside of Ancestry does not include your name, contact information, other identifying information. You are free to withdraw. My thing is, if I'm going to participate in research and I'm done many research studies over my time alive here. I want the results. Like, I want to see what is it are you researching? Y'all using my data? Then keep me updated at least. Please read the informed consent before making your decision to participate in the ancestry. The ancestry... Human Diversity Project. So, okay. Print this document. Save as PDF. Yeah, I'm gonna go back and read this. I'm curious. Save. Save. All right. Um, I read the consent, and yes, I give consent. Oh my gosh, does everything look right? If not, make changes below. Um, so it's asking me for the code here on this tube. Ooh, how exciting is this? Make sure that it matches the code that I inputted earlier. So, yep, it does. The US, my name. DNA matches, yes. It's just basically asking me to verify all the information that we just reviewed. Uh, yes, I want DNA match participation. DNA consent, processing consent, sample storage and research participation and notifications, text me kit status. Put my phone number there for updates. Notify me when new information and relatives are discovered based on my DNA. Yes, yes, baby, yes, yes, honey. All right, so it is done. I am officially registered. All right, so I'm going to put this to the side for now. Hold on. Be right back.
I'm going back to the instructions to make sure I do this correctly. All right, so we did the activation of the kit. Now it's time to spit in this tube here. Holding it upright, like here. And oh my gosh, spit to this line. That's, yo, that's a lot. That much spit they're collecting. I don't think I have that much. Oh gosh, all right, let's try. So it says, fill the tube with saliva to the black wavy line. Fill the tube until your saliva, not including bubbles, is at or just above the wavy line. It's easy. That's less than one fourth teaspoon. And then it says, release and shake. So that comes off, and then this top goes on. Replace the funnel with the cap. All right, spit in this funnel here. I thought it was a swab. What happened to the swab? Collecting spit. Hmm. Maybe it's not that bad, I guess. It just looks like a lot of volume that I have to fill in, but... Almost there. Who knows how difficult it would be to collect spit. All right. Did you imagine being the person that's actually gonna handle this spit? I wouldn't wanna be that person. And I would imagine spit changes form uh, over time, right? I'm sure the same spit collected today is not gonna be the same spit in this tube when they get it. <laughs> Damn, this is a lie, yo. So not including bubbles. I'm almost there. Almost there. I'm gonna get it over the line. Maybe three more spits. <laughs> Remove the funnel from the tube. That will be this. Screw on the enclosed cap tightly. That will be this. To release the solution that will stabilize the DNA in your saliva. Then tighten to release. Stabilizing fluid. You will know it works when the blue solution from the cap has emptied into the tube. Interesting. I hope the smoke from this incense here is not going to interfere with it. I don't think so. Shake the tube for at least five seconds. This will ensure your sample mixes thoroughly with the stabilizing solution so our lab can best process your sample. <sighs> I 
All right, I'm pretty much over the line. I want to make sure they have enough. No need, no excuses. Who's done this before? Feel free to share below what your experience was like. I think I'm there. We're there. We're there. Okay. I guess because my mouth is kind of dry. You know, some people, when they talk, like, they have a lot of spit in their mouth. I was talking, talking to a colleague yesterday, and he was just, like, fucking saliva and foam just foaming in his mouth. I'm like, that seems like it would be uncomfortable. I think that happens, though, when people get excited. All right, that should be enough. By gosh, that freaking should be enough. And then we're going to take this off and then screw this on. Place the funnel with the cap, tighten to release. You will know it works when the boost solution from the cap has emptied into the bottle. It has not emptied, or maybe it has. Okay. Then shake the tube for at least five seconds. Like so. Then we're gonna place the tube in the collection bag, place the sample inside the collection bag, provided in the DNA test kit, seal the bag with the adhesive strip. And then that's it. You guys can see the tent color. That was simple. Close like so, mail in your sample, place your sample back in the box with your prepaid return address. This box here. And seal the box with the adhesive strips and mail it in. Keep this card until your results arrive. All right, that was kind of fun. I'm excited to see what my results will say. And I will be back to share my actual results. So. Stay tuned. So there's an adhesive here. I'm just gonna pull this off. And I live like a couple of blocks away from the post office, so very convenient. And we we shall see. We shall see what the results say. I feel like I already know what the results are going to say. Um, funny enough, like, as many black people that say they have uh, Native American ancestry, I have not come across anyone where that was in their results. And I've watched quite a bit of uh, ancestry results, you know, through African Ancestry and um, Ancestry.com. And so I'm like, somebody lying. <laughs> somebody lying, but we shall see. All right, you guys. I am about to bounce. Feel free to share your comments below, and I will catch you.